Hello Spanish class, this is Mr. Moore. Um, I'm going to be going over a really interesting article with you for this week. Um, please remember that the intent of these articles is for you to actually go through the rough translation process on your own first. And then after you have done so, when, you know, when, I'll give you like a key point in this video for you to just stop, do the work, and then you can come back to this. But, um, but the idea is to do that first and then kind of check it against what I'm debriefing you on toward the end of this video. So after you've done everything and you want to see how you did, um, hopefully you're not just plugging everything into translate and just letting it do the work for you, but actually look at the words, um, look at the word structure or the sentence structure, put things together in a way that you think are going to be correct, and then just kind of um, compare the two. Obviously, like usual, I'd like you to take what you've written down or what you've typed up and, and, uh, and submit it to me. Either take a pic or if you're just doing it on a, on a Google Doc, submit it. Either one of those ways is perfectly fine. And I'm just checking to make sure that you put forth a thought process, of course. I'd love for them to be perfect, but they certainly don't need to be at this point. Because remember, the point of doing rough translations is just kind of learning and seeing how the language comes together a little bit more holistically. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I went apart from what we've done in the past. Um, I know I've done a few political ones, a few science ones in the past. Uh, the, the interesting coronavirus regarding uh, article regarding like potatoes um, and how they're encouraged to eat more of them in Belgium was kind of a fun one too. But this is one that I haven't done yet. I um, was in the La Sección de Obituarios, all right? So the, the section that had to do with people who have recently passed. And I came across this interesting short biography of Little Richard. Now, you may not know, maybe some of you do, some of you more cultured individuals may know who Little Richard uh, is was. Um, but your parents, or at least their your grandparents, would definitely know who this guy is. So he was kind of a cultural icon for a while. And um, when you look at this a little bit more in depth, you'll realize what all the guy had to offer. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit of background information before we delve into the specifics of it all. Um, here's a picture of him when he was a little bit, a little bit older. Um, one of the reasons I chose this, not just because I enjoyed his music, I actually recently after he had passed a, a couple weeks ago, um, I uh, I listened to some of his music while doing like a workout. So I was like listening to different music while I do that. And I was surprised at how much stuff he had that I really liked. Um, I always just think of 50s style music as not anything that I really get into. Um, but this was kind of fun. I'll encourage you guys to go and explore that too. Uh, anyways, I digress. A few interesting things about this article that I noticed linguistically. Um, I always love to find the cognate. That's one of my favorite things, like the fact that leyenda looks... I, I always thought that it should be something like a story, because like like uh, the verb leer is to read, but a leyenda is actually a legend. And there's some connection there, too. I, I like that one. Just a few other random ones that I'm noticing throughout here. The word arquitecto, as in the word architect, they're so similar. Um, a few other interesting ones that I, I like. Oh, this one is actually not... Is, is actually not a, a related word, but the word ronca to, dis, to describe raspy. It's one of my favorite words that kind of sounds like what it means, even though there's no word derivation that takes us there. Like the word chocon is meant to be like a bumper. So carro chocones are like cars that bump. I don't know. I just think that's kind of interesting as well. The word devota is in uh, devout, uh, very similar in there. Just a few other random ones that I was noticing earlier before we get too far into it. Um, Oh, where was it? There was one earlier that talked about his father that um, was talking a little bit about what he did for a living and, and so on. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, let's see. He's, it's all, yeah, right here. The word, the word for preacher I was mentioning earlier to someone else who was unfortunately having to listen to me. But the word predicador, as in someone who predicts or someone who prognosticates as the word for preacher. I thought that was kind of interesting, too. So... We're just going to go ahead and walk through this uh, in just a moment. So if you haven't yet translated the article, um, remember I have sent it to you already, or you should have a copy of it already. I have the uh, section down here where the people are discussing it afterwards. That's crossed off. You don't need to really uh, take a look at that unless you want to. This is the body of the article we're about to focus on, and here's the top as well. So if you haven't done the actual work and you know taken the 15, 20, 25 minutes, whatever that process is that it takes you uh, to attempt to translate all this, Go ahead, hit pause, and you can come back and watch this in a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so, Muere Little Richard, Leyenda del Rock and Roll. Okay, so, um, 
Legend of Rock and Roll, Little Richard Dies. And I don't think I'm going to take you through the entire, all, all of the pronunciations of these. I'd like for you to read it out loud on your own, but um, I'm just going to go through and do some, some generalized translation for you, and you can follow my cursor as we uh, continue. So here we go. Uh, Little Richard, self-proclaimed architect of rock and roll, uh, died on Saturday uh, uh, from uh, can uh, bone cancer causes. He was 87 years old. Uh, he had uh, his his biggest hits were in the uh, 50s, and he was known for his exuberant uh, performances, uh, shrieks, uh, raspy voice, and extravagant outfits. Um, he sold over 30 million copies of his records uh, globally. Now, if you think about 30 million, like, oh, yeah, he sold this. I mean, who buys records anyways? But if you think about the fact that records were, like, around 10 or $15 each, and the fact that he sold 30 million of them, that might give you more of a more of some perspective about how hugely, enormously popular of a run this guy had when he was uh, in his heyday. So, okay, continuing. Uh, Richard was born under the name Richard Wayne Pennyman in Macon, Georgia, on the 5th of December in 1932. Uh, his father was a preacher who also owned a nightclub. So the guy ran a nightclub at, during the evening, and it was a preacher by day. He definitely could compartmentalize. Okay, um, his mother was a devout Baptist. Um, oh, this is another one I wanted to mention to you. Like he was, uh, this is him speaking. This is a quote because he's having the quotations. I'll come back to this in a moment. It says, "I was born in the slums. My father sold whiskey, illegal whiskey." Uh, recounted um, Little Richard to Rolling Stone magazine in 1970. The reason I wanted to come back to this one is because of the word barrios marginales. That's their word for slums or or bad neighborhoods. They call them marginal neighborhoods is the exact translation. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, continuing on, the let's see, uh, the singer uh, was left home as an adolescent um, due to disagreements with his father, who initially didn't support his music. He was, uh, he was one of the, the few performers uh, who experimented with blues, R&B, and gospel music that really led to the evolution of what we now know as the, the, the advent of modern rock and roll in the 60s. His uh, song, Good Golly, Miss Molly, arrived at, uh, on the, the charts uh, in 1958. Other songs of his that are pretty well known include Tutti Frutti, Long Tall Sally, and he had a profound influence on the world. Um, from the Beatles, to the Rolling Stones, to David Bowie and Prince, uh, Little Richard was actually uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. So I hope you found that was that was uh, kind of an interesting short uh, biographical overview of his life. And um, if, I hope you got something out of this linguistically as well. And if you get bored, maybe some maybe some go check out some of his old music. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, miss you guys. Love to go over this stuff during class sometime, but unfortunately. Not going to happen right now. So, uh, again, ciao, adios, y hasta luego.